welcome to Learning Your Device session. Um, I'm Sarah Trimble Oliver and I'm in the IT department and we also have Ashley is in the IT department. She is a helper today. Charles is a incoming senior at Withrow and these guys are here to help um, as we're going through the device um, lessons. If you get stuck just raise your hand and we'll come and help you. Um, so this is kind of a somewhat of a refresher of what we already did on Monday morning um, but also some additional things that you didn't already learn on Monday morning that we didn't have time to get to. Okay so let's say on a scale of 1 to 10 how would you rate yourself on your comfortability on your device on what how you've been using it now for the past two and a half days? So on a scale, like one being, I'm like, I'm not getting it whatsoever. And a 10 being, hey, I got it, I'm off, I'll find whatever I need to find, I'm good. So who would be like a, um, a eight and up? Okay, what about a um, five, six, or seven? Okay, and what about like a zero to four, or one to four? Okay. Good. So that just helps me know like how fast we're going to go today. Okay, so um, will you scroll down, Charles? You're just going to be my navigator, I guess. Go one more down. One more down. And one more down. Okay. Okay, actually go one more up. Before I get um, go, uh, jump right into our tutorial that we're going to do, I just want to congratulate you on being brave and it, you know if you're new to a tablet or a touch device or you're um, kind of I don't know what the opposite of tech savvy is but if you're kind of tech scaredy or whatever you would call it <laughs> tech <laughs> um, you know uh, it's okay you are not alone we did a survey and about 30 percent of our teachers at CPS have not used a tablet before so don't feel like you're the only one and don't feel nervous and and um, the the num let me just tell you the number one way to learn technology is just to jump in and play and try it and don't be scared and the number two way is ask the kids all right because they are they are what's called digital natives all right we are all digital immigrants Ashley you're like borderline I don't know I don't know which one you're in but um, it is okay we are digital immigrants it is okay do not be ashamed do not be scared if you feel like you don't know all this tech stuff that you see going on around here, it's okay. We're digital immigrants and we accept it, right? I printed out paper handouts, right? Even though this is a very tech heavy conference, it's okay. Paper's okay. We're digital immigrants. It's okay to still print if you like print. Do not feel like you have to be a digital native because we're not digital natives. We're never going to be digital natives, all right? We're going to do our best to keep up with them, okay? But they're digital natives and they just get it. I don't know what, I don't know the deal, right? They barely had any training when they came here and they've been helping you, haven't they? They just, that's how their minds work because they were kind of raised on it. So in your classroom, let them help, okay? My son's fourth grade teacher got a set of iPads for the class and she said, okay, here kids, you figure it out and then you show me. And that and she was okay with that and right and she just she had no shame about that and you know it worked um, for some things right okay so let's go through this um, document and this is again somewhat of a repeat of what we already did we're gonna go a little bit faster through the things we already did Monday morning okay and then we'll get to some additional things but if you are um, if you're getting stuck somewhere, just raise your hand, okay? And these guys will help you. Okay. So, we all know where the power button is, right? Okay, we at least know that, right? Top left. <laughs> I know you know that. Okay, so um, when you first turn on your tablet, you swipe up to get to your password screen, right? You put in your password, and you get to the, what do we call this? It's the start screen, right. Okay, um, so we probably all know now about the scrolling and the pinching in, right? You know you can pinch in to zoom out and pinch out to zoom out, pin pinch in to zoom, whatever. You get it. 
okay? Don't forget your side buttons. The top one is the volume, up and down. Right here, okay? And the button, the smaller button on the side, which is under the volume button, will take you to the start screen. Or, if you are already on the start screen when you push it, it'll take you to the last app you are in. Yep, push that a couple times and you'll see. Takes you to the last app you are in, takes you back to the start. It's easier now, right? You've had some days to play with it and now you're like, oh, now I get it. Okay, so if I were to um, swipe in from the right side of my tablet, what are those buttons called? Does anybody... Charms. Charms, very good. The charms, you get to the charms by swiping in from the right side of your tablet from the outside in. Okay, the search charm is just what it sounds like. You can search for anything on this device or on the internet. Okay, I use this all the time because I couldn't figure out how to see my battery level and I went to search and search for battery level. Okay, if you don't know how to do something on this device, try that little search charm. Okay, the share charm is, um, let's go into Internet Explorer app from the start screen, okay, and then swipe in to get your charms. The share charm will let you email that link to whatever page you were just on or save it to OneNote or you may have some other options depending on what app you have installed on your device. We're gonna talk about email a little bit later, um, but this is how you could share whatever website you were just on in that app. So this, uh, this, this page cannot be displayed. Can I take it back? Can you help her get on the wireless? Um, so page that cannot be displayed means you don't have your internet connection. And let's actually use this as a learning experience to check, learn how to check our wireless connection. Does anybody know how to check your wireless connection on this? Uh, charms, right? Go to your charms and go to the bottom one, settings. Okay? And you see that the little bars, right? The little wireless symbol like your phone. You probably on Mayerson. Are you on Mayerson? You're on CPS Secure? That's okay too. That's surprising. Oh, CPS open? Okay. Okay. If you're on Temp Image, let's use this as a learning opportunity. Click on the wireless button and see what other wireless uh, networks are available to you. And uh, choose either Marison Public or CPS Open and connect to, connect to that one. So that is a good question. Um, sometimes that means there's actually no internet connection behind the scenes, but this week I have not found that to be true, and even though it has the exclamation point, it still is okay. So that means, I guess it means just try it and see if you have internet connection. Okay? When you said push the internet, you just mean click on that. Yep, touch that. Touch that to see what other Wi-Fi connections you have available. Okay, so who has Wi-Fi at home? Okay, so this is what you would do if you want to get on your Wi-Fi at home. If you haven't already, you would go to swipe out to your charms, go to settings, and click or touch on, I keep saying click, there's no click, Sarah. Touch the um, Wi-Fi and you'll see what other networks are available to you and your device and you touch one to connect to it. Okay, now, um, this week at Marison, we have found that some people get dropped off of the Marison Wi-Fi, so you would just go in here and disconnect you, disconnect from it and reconnect. That has helped. So you're probably like, I should have known that yesterday. Demetra, question? Oh, help, okay. You're on the temp image wireless? Yeah, I switched to Marison, but it's not working on Marison, so I was going to disconnect and go back. Okay, absolutely. Yeah. Just connect to whichever one is working for you today. It'll be fine.
Uh, okay, question was, what is airplane mode? That means um, it's, it's safe to use in the, on the airplane, right? It, um, it means it's not emitting anything on the cellular networks, I think. Um, if airplane mode is off, that is what you want while you're here today. If you turn airplane mode on, I don't think you will get any Wi-Fi. Right? Thank you. <laughs> You can use this on a plane if you put it in airplane mode. And now you know where it is. But only when they say it's <laughs> Okay. Ready to move on? Okay. Okay. How many of you have a wireless printer at home or at school that we don't know about and I'm not looking? A wireless printer at home? Okay, so you can print from these if you have a wireless printer by going swiping into the charm and go to devices and print, okay? Or whatever app you're in, you can print from there as well, okay? Um, these will not print to the big um, copier printers that we have currently, but we are working to get that in place this school year. Mm -hmm. Yes, great question. We, we got this model because they have a USB port so you can plug in your junk drives. Mm -hmm. um, I did not. I, I just went into Internet Explorer, hit print, it saw my printer. Um, okay, so the question was do we need to do any kind of setup to be able to print to our printer at home? It, it probably varies by printer, but I did not. I just went into Internet Explorer and went print. My printer was there. It saw it. I didn't have to do any setup. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That might be true. You can do that. So you will want to go to Internet Explorer and search for the driver for your printer and install it. Because this is a full Windows machine, you can do that kind of thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's on the um, I, keyboard, I believe. Yeah. On the keyboard portion. So you can plug in any USB device. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. I have a drive by itself that I can, because I make it load the printer on my laptop. Uh huh. But the drive's not on the computer, it's like a detached. Can I plug that into here to load the printer? If it has a USB cable, yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. It's just a Windows, just a Windows. Any other questions? Oh, you're excited. <laughs> it's good. Okay, so we talked about um, we talked about where to check your wireless, right? Because that's important. Um, so I want you to swipe in and go to settings again. Um, at the very bottom of the settings pane, there's a change PC settings. Have you guys played with this at all yet? So this is how you can kind of personalize, um, pick your um, you know your desktop view and pick your color scheme and all that. Um, you might, I know a few of you have had to change the time on your tablet. If you need to change the time, that's where that is. Okay. Yep, you see that in the list? Um, if you, in that same list under PC settings, if you go into accounts, okay, that's where you can add your cute little picture of yourself that will come up when you log in. Uh-huh. Yep. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, PowerSchool is already on here as on the start page. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, and this, and this is where I would start. yeah, that's where you would start under other accounts, and it says add an account. We're going to talk about the GroupWise email before we leave today. Okay. Okay. Oh, has anyone changed their default password that we assigned to you in your tablet? Has anyone changed it yet? Do you remember how, Demetra? Do you remember how to do that? Okay. We do. We do recommend you do that if you want. I mean, we do recommend it. Okay, if you can, because um, now everybody here at this conference knows how to find your password to your tablet, right? So, um, it, yeah, you want to probably change it to and plus something you'll remember that you don't have to keep looking at your tag. So um, that is under settings, change PC settings. Accounts, and then sign in options. Yep. Hit, hit under password, hit the change button. That's how you would do that. Mm -hmm. Got it? Okay. Are passwords, there's no other options just besides putting a full, like, I got. There is a picture. SkyDrive, is that like FaceTime? SkyDrive is a little bit like um, Google Apps where you can keep your drive, you can keep your files up in the um, cloud. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's kind of an optional thing that we're not going to cover since we use Google Apps. Okay. All right. Okay, let's move on. Let's go back to the start page. Okay, pop quiz. On this start page, as I'm scrolling through, are will I find all of the apps on this device on the start page? No. Where would I find all of the apps? Scroll up. So start with your finger um, underneath all the tiles and scroll up to the apps view. Okay, this is everything. So don't forget that because especially if you start downloading apps from the Windows Store. So put your finger here and scroll up slowly. <coughs> Anybody need help finding the apps view? Got you with me? Okay, and don't forget um, you do have to kind of scroll. It scrolls pretty far to the right actually. Scroll to the right, you'll see all, everything. Everything's there. Okay, so what if you want to, um, what if you find an app in this list that you actually want on your start page because you use it all the time? Who knows how to do that? I think there's actually a couple ways. Yeah, there's a couple ways. You can either swipe up from the bottom to get the customize button, or you can actually, a little quicker, if you just touch and hold it for a second. Touch and hold it, okay? If you simply touch it very quickly, it will open that app, okay? But if you touch and hold, it will check mark. See the check mark? And then what do you see at the bottom after you get a check mark? Pin to start, pin to start. You're looking for the little thumbtack. When you see the thumbtack, you got it. Pin to start. If you already have an app on your start page and you just selected it, it'll actually say unpin from start, which means it won't be on your start page, but it'll be in this apps list. It'll drop it down. Which one? Pin to start. You just um, touch and hold it for a second. Oh, touch, touch and hold. Like, so like touch one of them, any of them. Hold. There you go. Let up. See how it's checked? Now you can pin to start. Oh. 
15. Yeah. Question? I was just looking at hers, and she has a lot more than I have. I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Okay? Okay. So. <laughs> Talking about adding new apps to your start page, do you guys how to how, do you remember how to move the tiles on your start page? Who can you tell us? Yep. That's right. So there is actually two ways. You can swipe up from the bottom so you get the customize button. Okay, hit customize, and now all of a sudden your tiles, you can just touch and move it, touch and drag to move your tiles around. Okay? And then you can just tap anywhere in the blue area to get off of customize mode. Sometimes you, can't, you forget to get off customize mode, but you just tap anywhere in the blue area. You can, a little shortcut, just even without going into customize mode, touch and hold for a second, and then you can still drag things around. If you touch and hold, then drag, you can still move these around. Okay. All right, so let's go from your start page, go into your Internet Explorer app. So from this, how would I see what tabs I have open? That is what, how many, what apps I have open, yes, and we're going to do that right next. But if I'm in Internet Explorer and I swipe from the bottom up, I see what other web pages I still have open. See the tabs? So it's, it's just like on your, your old dinosaur desktop, how you have different tabs open in Internet Explorer at the same time. That's where your tabs are. How do you close the tabs? There's a tiny gray X at the bottom. It's tiny. You see that tiny gray X at the bottom of the tab? Yep. Okay, so let's say I'm on this website and I actually, I want to, I use this website all the time, okay? Let's say if you didn't, let's say you didn't already have a PowerSchool tile on your desktop, but you wanted to add the PowerSchool website to your start page. Does anybody remember how to do that? I think we went over it really, really quickly. You, so, so any website, you can add a shortcut to your start page to any website by doing two steps. Add it as a favorite and then pin to start. Okay, so to add it as a favorite, you will, first you want to click on the star. If you click on the star, it will show you all of your existing favorites, but then you also get a star with a plus sign button. Can you guys see the star with the plus sign? If you touch that, then it says, oh, hey, you want to add this website as a favorite? Favorite web Favorites in the website. Okay, then you can also see the thumbtack. The thumbtack is what you're looking for to pin to start. Okay, so hit the thumbtack, and then it will say, oh, hey, you want to pin this website to your start page? And you say, okay, or say start. Okay, that'll be very convenient with this device. Is this explained in the device? It is. It's it's explained in um, number. Does anybody see it? <laughs> it's number eighteen. Okay, okay, who remembers how to close an app? 
Yep. Start from the top, swipe down until it, you throw it into the garbage can. You, you want to practice that because if you get too many apps open, you are going to start seeing errors or slowness on your device. Okay? So, right now, you want to know how many apps you have open? Who remembers how to do that? Oh, you said it already. Yep. Okay. So, I'm going to... Yep. I'm going to start from the left, left side, and swipe into the middle, and then throw it back to the left. That's pretty cool. So start from the left, swipe in, and throw it back to the left. Okay, one more time. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah, start in the black. No, the black. Oh, yep. here. There you go. Okay, so I did it. Yep. I get what you were saying about making mm -hmm. it disappear. You said. So if you swipe in and while still holding it, throw it back. Okay? Raise your hand if you're having trouble with the throwing it back because it is a little tricky. You have to swipe just right. I can do it. Yep. Now, you can't close it from here, but if you tap it, then close it. Tap it and now close it. Swipe from the top and down. Swipe from the top and all the way down. Boop. There you go. It's, I, I have that part. Okay. It's this part to, mm -hmm. to make it. Oh. Uh, to throw it away? Uh-huh. It goes small, then it goes big again. Oh, you can't put your finger on it. Right. Drag it all the way down. There. Yes. I can. Okay, so I bookmarked a website. Yeah. But it's not showing up here. So let's see. It's but, this is what, if I click on it. Yeah. Then it comes, no. So Where let's look it? at your favorites. Okay. Is it one of those? Yeah. Okay, so let's go here, go to it, and then click that pin. I did. Before. You did? Okay. And I now did. say, oh yeah, it says, it says, it says yeah, yeah. Where is it? Let's see. I didn't see it. Is that it? <laughs> oh, maybe that's it. <laughs> I don't know. I bet that's it. You think? But this Oops. Site... That's it. It didn't even say what it was. Okay, any any other questions about seeing what apps are open? My question is, if I can't swipe over, that means I don't have any open, right? So let's go a little slower. Oh, I guess you don't. That's interesting. Oops. There it is. Ah. Okay. No, you didn't have any open. The only one that was open was mail, and that's when I opened. Okay. Yep, that's right. And then the closes. Press on it, open it, and go down. And swipe it down. That's right. That's the only way to close it now. Okay, you ready to learn something new that we didn't art learn on Monday morning? So you have to. Um, is it, did you already make it a favorite? So like, click the star. Yeah. Is it a favorite? And then that pin right there. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. does it show up on the desk? It's on the start? The start mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. Here's we're gonna learn something new. We're gonna. This is actually pretty cool. We're gonna learn how to open two apps at the same time, side by side. Okay. iPads can't do this, by the way. Okay. So let's open up Internet Explorer app. Okay, now watch my special swiping skills. So you start from the top and you go down to the middle till it turns small and then you bring it to one side or the other. Okay, start from the top middle, swipe down slow until you see it turn small and then move it to one side or the other. Okay, so swipe down from the middle until it turns small and then take it to, there you go, now it's small. So, nope, let go. All right, swipe down until it turns small. There you go, there you go. One way or the other, whichever way. Do you need some sort of authorization to use the store at all? Nope. I'm able to actually access that. You are? Do you already have a Microsoft account? Okay. Uh, probably not. Okay. 
Um, it might be. I'm not sure. Well, we'll try it. We're going to try the store if we have time. We should have time. Okay, that that's not, we're not covering that right now. <laughs> Maybe we'll catch up. Can you catch me after? Okay. Okay. Who's? Not swiping anything? Oops. It woke up. You're a very oily person. Look at your um your bar is like you don't even have half. You're like on a third. If you want to, it's always um it's always a good option to reboot. Okay. I tell my kids the first rule of computers. You're right, it is acting funny. It's like slow, it's like sleepy or something. Oh, yeah, I don't think I have anything open. Nothing open? It's just unhappy about something. It's like really sleepy. My battery's almost dead, too. Oh, that could be it. Yeah. Try to, um, I haven't seen it look, look like that though. Keep trying to get it to restart from that power button there. I have my cord with me. Yeah, you could, you, you could try plugging it in too. Okay. All right. So sorry for that distraction. So you have one app open on half the screen. You all with me? Ashley? Oh, Charles? Okay. So now I want you to tap in the empty side, and now it's asking you, oh, what second app do you want to open in that page? So click on a different app other than Internet Explorer or anything else. So you can't do two. You can't do two of the same. But if you want to have two websites open at the same time, you can, and here's the trick. In the second one, go to Desktop View, then open Internet Explorer. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Great question. So, oh, you. So when you hit Internet Explorer, it goes to Desktop View. Um, can you stay after, and I'll show you. Okay. If you happen to have changed your default browser, if you changed your default browser either on purpose or by mistake, then um, that's it. Yep. Then um, when you hit the Internet Explorer app from start page, it'll actually go into desktop view. And we learned this this week. It's because of the default browser, and I'll show you how to turn that back. Okay, so now you have two apps open, right? It's pretty cool. So if you want to um, go back to one app, then you just close one of them by swiping down. And then grab that little black um, divider bar to open it back up to full screen. Okay? Okay. It's pretty cool, huh? Yeah, you got two? Yeah, that's it. Okay, so um, remember how I showed you how to um, close, see how many apps you have open and close some of them? So um, we have actually had some people here at the conference who had too many apps open and didn't realize it. And when they were trying to do something in a browser, it said, um, you know, you're out, of, you're out of system memory, we're closing down this web page. And it actually had this weird error message that said, Jim is dead. And that's a group, the Google Chrome yeah. Google Chrome programmers thought that was funny. Well, it really scares people when they see that, right? So um, don't be don't be scared if you see it. it. It's not a bug, and you're fine. Just close some of your apps. That's all I'm trying to tell you. Is close some of your apps. Okay, so let's go to the Windows Store. This was not the right.
So everybody go to your start page and look for the tile called store. Okay, so has anybody been playing with the Windows Store yet? <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm curious to see actually if we can install some free apps. So, um, who found who found a who found a work related app? Anybody? Or were you doing you were doing playing apps, weren't you? You were doing World Cup, weren't you? YouTube. Okay, everybody, search for the YouTube app. I was actually wanting to know that. Is it going to let you download a free app without? Okay, that's what I thought, but then I thought I heard somebody say that. <laughs> that's so weird. Okay, so everybody search for YouTube or search for World Cup app or whatever you want to search for um, in the store. Yep, do a search in the store. I want us all to try downloading an app. Did it install an app? So you were able to install? Okay. Does anybody, has anybody found yet any, Ashley? Has anybody found yet any work um, things that you might use in your classroom and installed it? A stopwatch app. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Go ahead. Try it. So I searched for um, seventh grade math and found a couple things. So there's also this one called National Geographic Kids Weird but True. App that had good ratings. It says I'm connected, but when I would go to the store, mm -hmm. it says I'm not connected. Oh, That's it was now. really slow. It was oh. really, really slow. Uh huh. Try to restart it, Ashley. Try to turn it off and turn it back on. So who who was able to download an app just now out of the store? Who did download an app out of the store? Cool. Cool. How would you know? Hey, that's a good question. How would you know if it installed? How Where do you go look at all your apps? Yeah, so I actually got a little message on the bottom of my start page that said three new apps installed. Oh, wow. But to be sure, I can scroll down and look for the one that I thought I installed. There is not a Windows one. There is currently only the iPad iPhone app. Yeah, there's not one on the Google. There is one coming from the Google any day now. Oh, okay. I own an iPhone. I have a. Mm -hmm. I know. I don't know why they're so far behind. I don't know. And unfortunately, there's not one in the Windows Store. And yeah, I hope they'll catch up. Especially now that we have these. Now that we have these. I didn't care before, but now I said best interest. Yep. We've all got in the store. Okay. All right, so so it some of the apps you are going to be able to install, okay, but especially the paid ones you're not. And to do that, you're going to need to set up a Microsoft account, okay? And to do that, you go to, um, let me make sure before I try to say this. Um, you go to the settings charm change PC settings and then there's a little link that says connect to a Microsoft account so you go to settings change PC settings accounts okay I don't think I don't know if that's on your hold on 
Yeah, I'm sorry. It's number 16 on your instructions. Okay? Number 16. It's not other accounts. It's on your account. It's on the your account. And then there's a little link that says connect to a Microsoft account. Oh, see it? You can. You can use actually any email, and the CPS email will work. You will. If, do you have a personal email? You can use a personal email. I actually used my personal one on this just because, I don't know, I didn't realize it, and I was just kind of playing and trying to figure it out. And then my personal email, Okay. No, this is a, you're creating a new Microsoft account, so you probably will give it a new password. Now, if you use our, uh, our CPS account, is that like still under the, whatever, I mean, it's on this computer, it's not right, it's a stupid question. Yeah. This is the one where I should have done it. Yeah, you can use that one. Mm -hmm. Use that MSN. Yeah. Well, so if you're trying to set up a Microsoft, if you're, you don't have to, just one or the other. If you're trying to set up a Microsoft account, you go to Settings, Change PC Settings, Accounts, and right here on your account, the Your Account tab, there's a link that says Connect to a Microsoft account. Okay. Then what email do we use? Anyone you want. Well, what, what password do we need? Password I think you're creating a new password here. But I put in a password and it wouldn't take it. So sign in to your Microsoft account. If you already have one, you can do that. But if you don't, you need to go create a new. Oh, create a new. Uh-huh. Yeah. Nah. If you don't have Okay. That's fine. Just go back up to your account and click on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do I use the password that I normally use to get into this? Why don't you try that? If this doesn't work, you're going to have to click on this create a new account down here. But, but because that's MSN, they might be linked. They might be related. Connect to Microsoft. Yeah. No, it looked at your G. It found your Gmail account. Is that okay? It's trying. It's doing a protection. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> We've only got about seven minutes left. So let me um. Let me have your attention. I will be at the tech desk throughout today or just grab me whenever if you are, are trying are you still working through the Microsoft account um, and are having trouble just let me know catch me on a different um, a different time because I want to make sure I show you a couple of these other things okay so there's a couple of different ways to get your group wise email from this device Okay, there's two ways to get your GroupWise email from here. Okay, has anyone um, used the browser to see your, your GroupWise email on this yet? Some of you have? Okay. Screen. So um, if you go to Internet Explorer, you can actually type in our web based email link, which is email.cps-k12.org okay however I have some limitations about this way of accessing your email okay this is a simple web address if you go to this you'll be able to log into your email is there a link from is there a link from the staff net sure 
Okay, you can go to either one. Okay, so you can go to either one of these from Internet Explorer and log into your email. However, please let me be clear, everybody listen. There are some limitations about accessing. Guys, I want to make sure everybody hears this because I don't want you to call the help desk. Okay. There are some limitations about accessing your email through the browser on this by using that address. There are some functions that don't work well. Okay. But I've seen people here viewing their email, replying to email, and sending emails from this in the browser. Okay. Um, in the native app. Oh. Whatever the transition. Okay, so here's a limitation. You can't delete emails. What What did you find? Um, that it worked better in that. The, the desktop view. The desktop view. Yeah. Okay, so it maybe it works a little better in the desktop view. Does everyone understand what that means? Yeah. Okay, so from your start page, click on desktop view. Okay, now from desktop view open up your Internet Explorer browser, the blue E at the bottom. There's been a couple things that actually work better for me. So you know Windows 8 is very new, right? Very, very new. That is why there are some funky things that happen with your email in the browser, okay? So the second option, and you're welcome to try that, and apparently in desktop view it's a little more reliable, and you'll get a little less weirdness if you do that. The second option, though, is from your start page, there's a mail app, okay? This is a native app, is what they call it. If you want to set up your GroupWise account to that, you just have to sign a form. This one, remember, sign a form, wait to hear back that you're ready, and then follow these instructions, okay? So that's... You'll get an email back. Yep. Yep. So in this pack that you got, the very last pa piece of paper is the form you need to fill out and turn it into the tech desk. Yeah, I do. I do recommend this. I think so. Yeah. So this form. Yeah. I think, but it says your on your existing account will now be changed to Microsoft account. Yes. All of your yes. Switch. Yes. Okay. What did you say when Explorer desktop view? So from the from the start page. Okay. So my icon looks like yeah. Go back to your start page. Yep. So yep, that's it. Okay. And then the blue E down there okay. is the browser. Okay. Okay. And then that's just if you want to. You said that's you can, to access email. Yeah, you can okay. put in you can put in those one of those email addresses into this um, address bar, and you okay. can actually see your email that way. Okay. Mhm. Mm okay. Yeah. Let me see. Well, mine goes back to whatever I was last at. Oh. Yours doesn't? Doesn't matter. No. Okay. Nope. So should I have both of those windows there? Should that be there or should I click that out of there? Yeah, that that's fine. That can stay there. You're just you're just your wireless is really slow. That's why it's, it's okay. like slow. It's okay. taking a long time. Okay. All right. So yeah. Yep. Yep. So you need a Microsoft account to do the mail, right? You do. Okay. When you go to do these steps, okay, when after you turn in your form for email, you're gonna see in these steps you do have to do the Microsoft account for that. It's done that to me too. You gotta jump through hoops, touch your nose, stand on one foot, and twirl in a circle. Then you'll get your Microsoft account. It's done that to me too. Don't ever forget your Microsoft account password because it is hard to get it back. Let me just say that. 
It's you've got to jump through hoops to get it back. Is that the one that you send us from like No, that is the one that's when you create yourself. Yep. Okay, guys, we only got a couple minutes. Oh, we're out of time. But I do have to show you this something really cool, okay? You're gonna be able to project from these, okay? So if I am a very good girl, I'm gonna have this work. Okay, so you're going to be able to, um, on your projector, change a few settings. This summer. Should be the, before the start of school. Should be before the start of school. Hey, look at me. Look, guys, this is where you ooh and ah. <laughs> okay, I'm walking around and projecting this and talking and okay, yeah, mm -hmm. yep, so, so we are not ready to give you the instructions quite yet, we're still learning and testing ourselves, but as you can see, we have figured out quite a bit and it does work, we are Currently, Jerry Roberts is either replacing your projector or adding a wireless piece so that you can do this, okay? And then we are going to be giving you the instructions on how you do it, um, how you would toggle back and forth between projecting from your desktop to the tablet. If you all look on your start page, see this icon, Image Express Utility Light? You can go ahead and click on it. That's the key and that's what will connect you and it's already on your tablet. We did that for you, okay? Image Express Utility, okay? It looks like this, this one here, okay? But you will get those instructions um, before the start of school or around the start of school. Okay, so my last, um, my last thing I need to tell you is that there is going to be some additional training for these devices throughout July and August, and I do have some dates that I can show you. Um, it's here at Mayerson. Will you scroll down, Charles, to the bottom where it shows the, all the training dates? Okay, so, um, so right now there's a tablet training here on July 13th and August 14th. We are also going to be doing some of that as part of the back to school PD days that you guys have right before school, right? Because actually I know we all know you have colleagues who are not here that are going to be part of this, part of your team. So um, that's part of the reason why a lot of this is being tape recorded. Um, but there will be some additional follow up training there as well. But if you're feeling like you can use another session, there are some already scheduled here at Mayerson. These are different. Um, it will be mostly the same, same material that we just did. You can call the help desk. Oh my goodness, I'm so glad you mentioned that. Okay, before I let you out of here, two quick things. This is a diagram that we are working on to help communicate to you guys all the technology support that you have available to you, okay? So um, if you look at the orange one, that's the help desk number. You need one? Yes, here, here, pass this. Okay, the orange one is the help desk number. Okay, the yellow one is the audio visual help desk number. That means projectors and speakers. Okay, um, you are also getting more on site tech. You're going to have a technician on site. Nice, isn't it? Starting at the beginning, starting as soon as we can get them hired. What? So remember, Mrs. Bolton standing up and saying, we're investing in you. They are, they, we are hiring school-based techs. They, won't, they may not be there full-time, depending on how many um, team members you have, but you will have more site help, more help on site, okay? But you also have the help desk as well. So the super user is different. They are specifically on software, so like Blackboard. Okay. Okay. That's, okay. Google. That's
Blackboard and Google. Okay, um, and then the last thing before you get out of here. This is a draft social media policy that the board is reviewing and, um, you know, is interested in feedback on and their, their intention is to adopt a social media policy. So can you please take one and review it? Um, you know, you know, everybody understands it's, it's, it's kind of a, a new world, right? And it's kind of scary. You don't know what's appropriate or what's not appropriate to use in your classroom. So, um, I mean, it, even after reading this, to me, it's still not totally clear, but at least we're, at least a policy is in the works so that you'll have at least some guidance on this kind of stuff. Like I have a, like I have a Twitter I give to my students. There's a Twitter account. I mean, it just how I do is post homework. Right. I don't I mean. Right. Sometimes I'll you know say happy birthday to somebody, but uh, no one really ever follows me because it gets you know like yeah we're not going to follow this. Uh, <laughs> but um, but that's how the kids. That's yeah, what the kids the use, right? Um, but. Is, is that why I have to change that to be like a specific CPS one to fit? So I am not sure, but read this. I think okay. there it may possibly, there may be some possible changes or paperwork or forms. I don't know. This is hot off the press. They just brought these down this morning. Wanted us to share them with you since you guys are all now cutting edge digital. Right. <laughs> okay. No, you're not. This is this is what this is more about what you shouldn't do or how you should do it appropriately, right? Okay, it's actually it's helpful. It's very helpful. Okay, um, your time is up. I'm gonna let you go. If you have st questions, I will stick around. Thank you. Should I give this back to you or should I take it down to the tech desk? The tech desk. Okay. Thank you. Um, I was disconnected to log in um, that micro soft yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And I didn't get through. But anyway, yeah. um, what were you yeah. talking okay, about with like, this? Okay, so this is eventually going to be the way that you project uh, yeah, you from your. Okay.